right hello hello no excuses ladies we are live so we are live on zoom as well we just gonna start on zoom in just a second but i just want to invite you to the zoom but if you can't do it obviously here stay with us live on facebook i have my dear friend of mine here Kristen, Kristen is here, coach, life coach, and a trainer. All right, so we're going to start also on Zoom, but please join us. This meeting is being recorded. All right, and here we are. So last episode of the season, this way we are like kind of dressed very festive. <laughs> I told you girls, get like something red or some other color if you're celebrating some other holidays, right? I've heard from my friend that... She she's wearing blue for the for the holidays of Hanukkah, right? Oh, so go. this is so interesting because everybody people celebrate different holidays, right? And we can learn from each other. So uh, that's that's really unique. But today we're gonna be talking about really reviewing the year. That's what we wanted to do. That's why I said it's going to be a last episode. We want to kind of talk about how the year was and what we need to do in order 2021 21 to be better year the best year ever right and and better year than this one right mm -hmm. so grab a pen and paper and just uh, stay with us and uh, and take some notes uh, what we because i think by by doing this we're gonna discover a lot of things that were great appreciate a lot of things maybe be grateful for a lot of things but also things that did not maybe come out as good or mistakes that we have made so we can we can become better next year right so we're gonna pretty much we're gonna start we have some questions written we have some thoughts of of this year written so we can go with this along and we're gonna have a a good discussion and if you're gonna come on board of course uh, as a participant on Zoom, we're gonna admit you. But if you're gonna be here with a, live on the Facebook with us, just make make some comments, make some notes so we can see it. Okay. So, um, Kristen, how how do you how how was this year for you? Twenty twenty. How was uh, overall this year for you? It okay. was good. It was an odd year, as it was for everybody. <laughs> it was crazy. There were lots of like roller coaster moments, but. Overall, it was good. It, there was a lot more time for like self-development and self-reflection, which was nice. So Yes, and I can totally say the same. Um, even though it was such a, when, when, we, when we look at this, it was a difficult year. There was some crazy changes that happened, at least for our family and for our business. But overall, this year was a very good year. Even though a lot of people have lost family member, people got sick, right? But then, yeah, for, we are grateful and we for the fact that we didn't get sick, that our families stay safe, that we didn't lose anybody. Uh, but if you did, we we are truly sorry for what you've been through. Mm -hmm. But then this coming year, that's this year, you have to and you have to kind of look at this as seeing new light and seeing based on what what happened this year seeing something that good's gonna happen something good's gonna is going to happen someone someone's gonna show up in your life and the new perspective and the new possibilities right mm -hmm. so um but on what if you would look at the scale one to ten how would you rate it maybe as business maybe personal family how would you rate this year um what numbers would you give and you guys can do the same kind of like one to ten think about family think about business think about maybe personal growth what what this year was like um i would say family was like an eight i mean we got a lot more time together mm -hmm. we did a lot together i feel like we grew closer together which is awesome we weren't so busy um business I would say, I'd say lower. I would say maybe six for business, just because I feel like I've had this nagging desire to do something that's my own and I haven't developed it into anything yet. And mm -hmm. I really want to. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like with all the extra time we've had, that was 
kind of a missed opportunity closing out 2020. Not that it's gone. The opportunity's yes. not gone. Yes. But for 2020, that opportunity and the gap, that window is closing. So 2021, I need to set some goals and adhere to those goals. Um, as far as, what was the other thing? The business, personal, and like family. Um, personal, I feel like is probably eight or nine. I feel like I really had the opportunity to just do a lot of personal development. Mm -hmm. I read a lot. I listened to good good developmental type stuff mm -hmm. you know I really just poured into into me and trying to figure out myself and what I wanted and who I was so that's great and I, I obviously uh, Eliana is with us here on the zoom so Eliana can po post in the comments how how this year was for you uh, on the one to ten I think Dining, that going down into business, family, and personal would be great. People can see it later when, when we're going to have the recordings. And of course, you guys, if you're watching, do the same. Yes, I would say hey, business-wise, there are two actually points of as it comes to my side of the business, right? Our side of the business, I speak physique. I feel like I would rate this year as 10, even though we... Uh, the amount of members that we had has changed. A lot of people stopped working out because of COVID, because of the chaos that happened. But why I would rate it as 10 still? Because within 24 hours, we pivot the business. And not everybody has the guts to do that. To pivot the business, to transfer, overcome the, uh, the, uh, the, the crazy chaos that was happening in the world and still continue and totally not. Uh, not don't stop mm -hmm. that's a huge first of all huge guts huge risk and and um, really being very proactive not stopping like other businesses shut down the doors for months and nobody never offered anything pick physique was still there and still is even though it's a less maybe percentage of it but it's still there mm -hmm. and the pick physique will come out again out of the deep waters because that's what we do we've been doing this for a long time so we're gonna do we're gonna figure it out and and yes we close two locations because this has to be done after figuring out the numbers and everything and that was the right decision so huge step and um, but, but yet now personal personal and family personal yeah like you did we i've done so much personal development so much uh, so much writing so much uh, putting down my thoughts and uh, into my notes and creating stuff that um, it helped me to understand more of myself but also i feel like uh, i i really input into my own self like i really um scale in understanding and learning a lot of things because we got to remember that the self-development, which we're going to go into a little bit m more later, is something that nobody will ever take away from you. No one. It's your thing. So once you're going to have it, once you're going to have the knowledge and and it's it's like forever, right? It's like the virtue. Now, family, we spent such a crazy amount of time together. The kids were having Zoom at, at home and we still manage everything. We, we, we treated this new way of like a fun way instead of stressing we actually turn this thing into positive yeah. that the kids are with us that the kids that the kids can um, be next to us that we can actually show them how to work out how to uh, plan uh, uh, staying at home and more activities mm -hmm. so it was actually we turned the negativity negativity into positive aspect and and i uh, overall I looked at this year as it was still good. It was a year full of surprises. That's what I would say. Yeah. The year of something that you would have seen only in movies, mm -hmm. right? It's like when you when you look back, step back and see it 2020, this is like <laughs> the year that you would have never even thought in your no. craziest dreams that to happen. So um, kind of I have the, sec the second question led to the next one, but... Uh, how did you how did you act during the the, the COVID? like what were uh, overall like did you did you uh, shut yourself down or did you continue doing the same things as you were doing and i'm gonna give you an example 
when we shut down the actual gym, the gym was closed, not shut down operation, but shut, we closed the door, we were operating online. I remain with my schedule exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I would get up at five or earlier. I would do the same exact things. But what I've realized with people, people were just slowing down, sleeping in, they started walking around with pajamas, not taking care of themselves. And I wonder how, what did you do? Like, how, did you shut yourself down or did you continue doing what you've been doing? Because the world was on a shutdown, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It was like, people thought that because they have to stay at home, everything else has to be different. They have to step back and stop living. Yeah. That's how it almost feel. Yeah. What did you do? Like when, when this whole thing was announced, yeah. how did you, what did you guys do? Oh, what did we do? I, I feel like I pretty much continued on. I feel like even though the gyms were closed, I was still doing my workouts every day. And I actually, it was fun because I had Carter doing the workouts with me. So I remember I this like, time when you were saying to me, yeah. oh, we're working out, oh, we doing the laps around the, the house. Yes, yes so I remember. Yeah, we go for runs, we do our workouts. So I got my son involved and we made it a priority to get our workouts in. And I actually feel like my fitness increased during COVID because I just got creative with workouts and I didn't let the fact the gyms were closed stop me. I did have days that were like very not productive days, but I didn't ever let that become a long-term thing. Like maybe there was one day where I was just like, I don't know, feeling the weight of it all. Mm -hmm. And I was a lot less productive, but yeah, I didn't wallow in it and I didn't sit in it for more than a day. Like I'd be like, okay, we got to go. Yes. Yes. Come on. <laughs> so, so did you work out this year? Uh, did you actually work out during the shutdown? What did you do? Or did you actually step away from the routine that maybe you strongly had? Because that was, it, it really, we've seen such a different scenario. Some people that have been total workout fanatics, mm -hmm. stepping away from it and letting the fact that the gyms are closed, stopping their, their own routines that have been so strongly impacted in them right so what did you do we would love to hear from you like i see some pop, some ice popping on on the light there write it down did you did you continue the workouts did your health increase or decreased and uh, if uh, if you gained the weight please write it down and we, will, we can discuss this later so yes our workouts are on a schedule our workouts was great the whole family was working out together and that's and I see this right now in Tyson mm -hmm. because he's been working out with us for so many months. Now today he woke up at quarter to six, even though he has a two weeks off from school. This boy got up with me knowing what we had planned, even though he didn't want it, he still showed up for this session. Mm -hmm. And that's you as a parent, you, because you showing up, you doing this, you have such a strong impact on your children. And that's why the no excuse, that's why we do the no excuses to show you that really, if you don't make excuses, if you show up as a no excuses in your household, your children will see this and they're going to follow your steps. So I think that's an amazing factor that it happened today and overall few, the few months, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so yes, rate your, rate your health now on a scale one to 10 how your health and fitness was this year did you did you did you gain the weight did you lo did you lose the weight did you uh, did you work out more or maybe you change your workout routine maybe you learn some new new sport that we don't even know of like this is very important just to do that right and be specific as far as if your health increased or decreased like really write it down the specifics of it did you slowly stop showing up for your sessions or maybe because it was virtual you said you know what i'm not gonna be working virtual because i don't like workouts virtual and you fully shut down and this is very important to get this because you know what where i'm getting with this why i'm saying to to really look at this because 2021 might have the same exactly thing. The gym's gonna be shut down, the gym's gonna be closed, and if you're not gonna change already, if you're not gonna start changing for the next few days and start thinking, I need to approach the new year in a different attitude, you're gonna bring the same mistakes 
in the next year. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be the same thing. That's why I wanna set you up, guys. If, if because this is not getting anywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's gonna be here for a while. Now we were just talking about it. How many people in California are getting sick? Mm -hmm. People getting sick more than ever. Even with the place where where Kristen is working. People, you hear that. People getting this stuff. So the gyms might not be open for a while. And you need to change your attitude towards the workout training. How are you going to be training, right? Mm -hmm. How are you going to be, who are you going to be following? Who is going to be your mentor? Who is going to be your coach? What program will you choose? Which we're going to talk about this later. And you need to make the decision, right? So um, now, what happened Again, what happened that you gained the weight? And don't blame COVID for this, which is a common thing. Mm -hmm. We're still blaming it. Yes, COVID started, people gained 30, 40 pounds. But there is always a reason behind it. And the reason for it is like, think about it. Like, there is always, this was just a chaos beyond anything, COVID, right? The whole sickness. Mm -hmm. But isn't life brings you all the time something? Uh, something that is unexpected, something that is hard and a big obstacle in your life that is happening. And if you act, if you're going to catch yourself that there is, you always stopping your workouts or you stopping eating healthy because of the stress of work related, related things, or uh, you, you, maybe somebody dies, or maybe, uh, I don't know, you have to move from state to state, or kids are just going out of control if things outside things in your life causing you so much stress yeah and then you stop your workout routine you kind of thinking okay i'm stressed i'm gonna stop or i cannot handle this obviously COVID would impact you the same way or even more so the point is to understand those outside factors that happens in our life and not let them dictate how you run your healthy life because these things are something uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you can control is your own self, how you act, your attitude, how you eat, if you work out or not. Those are very simple things, guys, but yes, it's so forgotten. And a lot of times people tend to forget about this, but there is a way of learning this and catching yourself on it, say, okay, just because I've had a hard day at work or just because the gyms are shut, shut down doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue work out yeah. and continue about my health and my self, um, self um, care, right? Mm -hmm. So th those are the things that you need to understand this year that if you've been making this mistake that you cannot carry on next year because this thing is traveling with us throughout the whole time. So... Uh, what else are we going to discuss right now? What, what did you accomplish as far as goal, goals that you had set for yourself? Like what are, what are the things that maybe at the end of 2019, you wrote it down on a piece of paper and you said, you know what, 2020, this is what I'm going to do. Or maybe you start doing something in 2020 that you totally didn't put it on the paper. You start doing something and, and, and maybe you created something. What is it? Write it down, put it on a, put it in the comments, put it in the chat. And what goals, what are the goals that you, what goals did you have, Kristen? Did you like write them down or what was, what was something that you, in 2019, unless you came up with an idea of 2020, did you came up with any idea of 2020 already? Um, I I think in 2020, I just realized that I wanted to create something of my own, and that was a big thing. I am big about writing down goals at the beginning of okay. the year. Honestly, I don't remember if I even did any for 20, at the end of 2019, for 2020. And if I did, I can't remember what they are. Um, but you came out with the idea. This year yes. showed you something that you wanted to pursue yeah, your own thing. For sure. And and this is great. So if you came out with this idea and you, you, you obviously, if something tells you that you want to do something or pursue something on your own, you should, should be specific. You should know exactly what you want to do and you should write this down. And uh, yes, put it in the comments. Uh, obviously, like for us, I can tell you that uh, we had we we wrote those goals in 2020 and obviously 
we didn't expect that the gym, we're going to actually close the gym. That was not our goal to like close the physical locations because we never even thought about doing online coaching. But now, since we pivot the business, now we're thinking this is totally the year, the, the way to go. We will never reopen a Peak Physique again, the physical locations. But we're going to be going online the same what we've been delivering in physical locations. We're going to be doing this online. So again, this is like uh, the goal was transformed into something pretty cool, pretty amazing, because now we're working on other things, how to set up the whole online system. Mm -hmm. It takes a while. It's not something, some, something easy and overnight. It really takes, it's a lot of process. You need to record the videos. Mm -hmm. You know this, mm -hmm. you need to record those videos. You need to put them into different specific programs for six weeks. For instance, this takes a while to develop everything, but we're working on it and it's a deadline by the end of the year. I put my deadline yeah. and I've been working on it like crazy. So yes, it's coming up and that's the whole idea. What else? Look, I came out with the no excuses ladies, not even thinking that I'm ever going to do something like this, but the thought and the idea of helping people and helping women, uh, it's been always strong passion of mine. And I've been doing this for over 20 years. And, and, and it just came out. What is going to come out of this? We will see. We will see. Obviously, definitely some programs that will give you some all coaching ideas and coaching regimen uh, that will come with it. But we'll see where it is going to go. But write this down. What has been accomplished? Because this is good. Writing those goals. And it's okay when they change, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In 2019, did you think that you wanted to do this on your own? Have no. you ever had that thought? No, especially after we had sold our business, I was kind of like, oh, I just, I don't even want to think about doing. Exactly. You know? Look at this. And then out of nowhere, she comes yeah. out with this idea. So that's the whole beauty of it. But you got to be really uh, tune into and congruent with what you really want, right? Mm -hmm. You have to understand this and yeah. not being afraid of your own feelings, not being afraid of your own passion. Uh -huh. Because a lot of you are out there afraid. Mm -hmm. You are afraid and the afraid is just like the failure. We're just talking uh -huh. about it. Like, don't be, like, if you fail, it, that's a learning process. You're going to fail and you're going to, you, you, as long as you're going to get up and start over, yeah. <laughs> maybe in a different way, but you got to continue over. And you don't know until you try. Until you try, right? So, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, the, the, overall, what's the victor, victory of 2020? Besides, you know, the goals would be the uh, victories for you, as we were saying. So, uh, write this down. And what else, like, if you have thought about something in 2020, but something stopped you from achieving this goal, like think about it, even COVID, or maybe you had a goal of losing a lot of weight and then COVID happened and then you couldn't, then you let COVID control you of not going to the gym and then you ended up not losing any weight. Like think about it, simple thing, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody set a goal of losing 50 pounds. And then COVID happens and then you let the COVID dictate this. And then the person is at the end of the 2020 is still did not lose 50 pounds. So you see, but yet it's controllable. You still could have. So what things happen, what factors happen in your life that you didn't achieve that goal? Like what stopped you? And, and we should be specific mm -hmm. because if you wanted to become fit and look better and feel better and just because the gym's closed and you 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 did not show up you stop exercising that's a very uh, strong excuse and this excuse cannot be carried on in 2021 that's what's gonna happen so uh yes if you are a person that looking for a program obviously we offer we strongly offer you the peak physique online with the awesome online sessions uh, but if, uh, and that's something that can be discussed later. However, write this down. What happened? What stopped you from achieving your goal and your mission? Now we're going to go into a little bit self-development. How many books did you read? Oh gosh. I don't even know. <laughs> that's funny guys. I don't know either. And wow. that was, and that was my goal last year. I start writing them down, but I didn't write, I didn't put all the 
Raka is going over oh, my gosh. iPad. <laughs> we have a dog here that is walking you over the like gliders. A little bit ago. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is really funny, ladies. I I did not write exactly how many books I wanted to read. Mm -hmm. I wrote some titles, but I didn't write all of them. And this is my mistake. And I said this year, I am going to be specific on how many books I wanted to read. Oh, I like it. Because if you would have asked me, I probably would have missed on so many titles because I read a lot of them. I listened to all, a lot of them. But this year, every time I accomplish book, I will write the title. And my goal is to have two books a month. Nice. I think this is a good goal, even nice. though like some of the high performance say a book a week. Now, do you fly for books or you take notes? Um, I take notes. I like highlight things. I write things down. I dog ear them so I remember to come back to exactly. them. Exactly. So I don't just like read through. Me too, because I it's not about the speed. I can't. And I think even if your goal would be to read one book a month, that's still good versus nothing. Mm -hmm. That's 12 books a year. Think about it. Some people haven't touched the book. When was the last time that you read a book? Like, l write it down. I know that Aliana is reading books and she's on with us, but like, where was the time? last time? Let me tell you, years ago, 25 years ago, I never would touch the book. I was laughing because when I was 19 years old, I was in Mway and people used to ask me to read the self-motivational books. I said, get out of here. I'm not reading this <laughs> stuff because I was not ready. I wasn't ready. And it, the readiness comes, I don't know what the readiness comes no. with. I really don't, I, I don't know. Maybe just you start, start reading them and start understanding that there is a process to become, to become successful. Like all the people always say, read the self-developmental books, read them, but apply what's in them. If you read and you don't apply, you're not going to get anywhere. It's still like not reading a book. Let's be honest with this. If you read and don't apply, it's like you didn't read a book. But all the famous people are out there. Ben Franklin, you know, Zig Ziglar. Uh, right now, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, we're talking about the Tesla guy. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, those are the people that create things, create things that been used by our, all, all of us. We drive a car, now we have the electric car, we used electricity. These people wrote amazing books and they follow the ones before them. So, so there is a tool, there is a step. And that's why I think once you're going to start understanding this, that in order for you to grow your paycheck, you need to scale yourself. You need to learn, you need to learn. So where are you gonna learn from? From the best, the best that are out there. So the book, somebody put the book out there that went through it, put in a process, and now you're gonna learn it. So that's like, pick physique, put the program together for you to lose the weight. It's a tool, it's a step-by-step -step process if you're going to trust in the process, you're going to get the results. And so far, we delivered 20,000 people. 20,000 people got the results. So there is a process in everything, right? So if we're going to do this, if we're going to continue doing this, I think we're going to, we, we definitely going to scale. So yeah. you're going you're gonna to write this down. If you, if you read a lot of books, write it down. And please let us know, what do you think by personal development? What is a personal development to you? What does it mean to you? Because recently I came across someone that this person did not know what personal development was, what was self-development. And we were, are, that, that's, did you came across someone that a person ever said, I'm not sure what it is? I don't know if I have. I kind of ask this person uh, just because uh, I was dealing with a lot of things and I said there are good truths find in books um, and uh, things are out there. <laughs> She's making us laugh, I tell you. She's pretty funny. So, so, so yes, understanding self-development, personal development is, is really good and, 
and, and reading books, reading, listening to the audiobooks. If you don't have time to read the books, I think doing audiobooks, it's a great way. Raka, thank you so much for making the beautiful music <laughs> of the Grinch. Our background noise. Yes. And did you have any coach or mentor that you, that you follow? Because it's all about, as we said, scaling and improving. So if you are a person that wants to become more fit, healthier, and this is a common thing, right? People say sometimes you come across people and they say, well, you have people that follow you in your fitness center that, that listen to you as a coach and they ask you for the advice. So you see, you follow a coach, she's men, men, a mentor, right? There, I came across a lot of people that would say, I don't follow anybody. I just put on YouTube and I just do these workouts. And I said, okay, but what is the process in all of this? So you didn't lose any weight for the past year because you did not have a process in place. You didn't, you did not have tools. Nothing was put in order. So do you follow actual a coach as someone that's done it themselves? They have proofs. They have uh, uh, case studies that will prove that this was done, right? That, th that there is a proof in place. If it, there is none, how you can follow that person, right? There has to be something that show the actual results. So do you have a mentor? Do you have a coach? If you don't, you should have one because by, by following someone that's done it or has a good idea, mm -hmm. it's going to lead you to a successful weight loss, fitness, maybe scaling the business, right? So you need to have it. And if you don't, obviously, um, uh, again, I'm going to show you to follow Peak Physique. Send us a message and let us know uh, what is that that you're looking for. And we can show you and put the process in place so you can do it. And if you follow, looking for a coach, a mentor, someone that needs to lead you to a better consistency in life, you can send me a message and we can talk about this. Uh, because those things we want, we want you to enter the 2021 feeling more organized than ever and understanding the mistakes that you made this year. So, uh, what excuses have you been making this year? Like, what were the excuses that you've made this year? Like, I have to tell you, uh, my mom was here, right? My mom came in here. Uh, early in February, but she kind of stayed a few months because she couldn't fly back to Poland. And sometimes she, like I look at this time and I say, I wish I would have spent a little bit even more time or devote more time to her. Because sometimes she, we would go for walks, but sometimes she would ask and say, let's go for a walk. And I would say, you know what, I have to work. But yet the work could have waited because nothing would happen. Nothing was so urgent. It was my choice. So sometimes I would say that the excuses were like more of the stubborn side <laughs> of me yeah. or, or saying, you know, postponing things. So th th things happened and we catch ourselves on it. But w what was the excuse that you were making? Was it time? Was it not enough money? Was it really, what was it? Like the, did you catch yourself on some excuses that you were making like severely this year that you would like say, go back and say, you know, I should not done it. I should maybe stop and switch or do something. I different. was thinking I, uh, or think that I felt like I had lots of time. Like, I don't know, like everything was kind of at a standstill. So it's like, I have all the time in the world. I'll get to it tomorrow or I'll, you know, Oh, okay. Okay. So, so the time is like, Okay, I exactly, and if I think it felt like this at mm -hmm. some point, yeah. because where where business were shutting down or business people were staying at home, not even working, right? And that could have, could have caused you like thinking like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this later. Yeah, I'm gonna do this later, time. or I'm gonna have got time, and then out of nowhere, look, yeah, yeah. at the end of 2020. Exactly. So guys, look how the time flies. It, it's just crazy how the time goes fast and we know it and we all have the same amount of time we have 24 hours and and so i some why some other people are successful some other not because they choose the specific things that they do right mm -hmm. and they put it on the schedule and they and they devote the time to the one thing and one thing only for a certain amount of time and block the time on their schedule mm -hmm. and not postponing things so 
yes, yeah, so we gotta we, we gotta check this out and see if the time or something else was different. So if your goal is to lose the weight, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna are you gonna, are you gonna step into the 2021 thing like okay, I'm starting and I, no matter what's gonna ha what's happening outside of me, I'm continue doing what I promised myself because it also comes to what I think a promise like I promise to do this and this uh, next year I think promising yourself making a commitment to yourself and I'm gonna give you a great example uh, someone that wanted to lose a lot of weight make a commitment uh, with themselves and with the whole family that if the person would not would not show up to a personal training session, would pay $300 to the personal trainer. How does this sound? Does this sound awesome or what? <laughs> That's pretty cool. So how about making a commitment uh, and setting up some high, maybe, uh, maybe not even rewards, but maybe penalties. Maybe penalty will work for you this year, this upcoming year, that if you're not gonna do something, there is penalty related things. So write this down. If you're gonna lose weight, what what are the steps that you need to take and do this, right? And maybe penalty will work for you. Maybe something different. So, what have you been feared the most this 2020? What scared you the most? Where is that that you were scared, Kristen? Well, what are you scared of? Um, staying in the same spot, just being stagnant and not progressing. It felt like this for a moment. Even when we were, when we closed the, the gym, I felt like I was working on things, but nothing was changing, right? Mm -hmm. It felt like this. Do you guys feel like this? That was a moment. Sometimes maybe you feel like this right now that it, what kind of got stopped? Mm -hmm. Like it's not rotating or moving. Right? Do you feel that way at some point? Even yeah. though the virtual site is growing and uh, virtual things happening and changing and people growing and scaling, developing things, things still happening, the world is still spinning. Mm -hmm. We didn't stop. The time is running out, but it can be. But in the beginning, like when COVID hit, I remember we were a little scared. I have to tell you, honestly, when we would go and do shopping, we would come home and we would just literally clean everything from the store before mm -hmm. we would put it in there so that was like one thing that we got scared of but then i guess seeing a, a vision where are we gonna go with this right that was a moment like okay how are we gonna transform and put everything into place so we're gonna have a big vision and so we're not gonna stop and we're gonna keep on growing so i think that's important thing right now to do it's like you might feel like where is that that i'm gonna go what, what is going to happen in your life? Like, what's the next step? But even though what you have right now, or maybe physically you've been doing in your business, or uh, mostly in your business, whatever there is a, that has been created physically and been sold via person-to-person -person interaction, it can happen via yeah, online. Mm -hmm. So you got to really think that the world, whatever you can offer to others and service or help them, it can still happen in a different way. So don't give up. Don't think that because you don't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, it cannot happen. I feel right? like too, the playing field has kind of been leveled in some ways. Like now everybody, like these businesses who aren't allowed to be open are having to pivot and get creative and find other means to provide and to remain in business. Yeah. And so it's kind of like just everybody's out there. If you, people are having to get creative on what they do and how they do things. And yeah, it's really just and work, like, yeah. work harder, right? That's what it is. And, and realize that don't give up on being challenged like this because sometimes what we fear is that step of being challenged, being in that hard and difficult situation, I think. Uh, humans, I think we drive those things, we wait for those things, but a lot of times we step from this because we don't feel confident enough. Mm -hmm. And confidence will grow 
when you actually do things, even if it's just a little step forward, that's how your confidence will grow. And I think also that people stop a lot of things because they think like, okay, I don't know the virtual things or I don't know how to work out virtually or I don't know how to set up a platform virtually. But it's a process of learning. Mm -hmm. You got to realize that whoever developed something out there, they first started from nothing, from not knowing anything. And then they grew to, to developing a system and you're going to do it too. So even if you're not confident enough there yet, you're not there yet. Stop with small little things. A little bit of every day will get you there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, with these businesses, I like you can see, you know, um, the, 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 the restaurants, some restaurants will go above and beyond and say, you know what, we're not going to close the door. We're going to do everything and deliver and uh, do online deliver, create websites so you can order or all these crazy things, you hire an Uber driver, whatever there is, and some others won't. So how far are you going to get to overcome the fear of the unknown that you're going to, you're going to actually pursue what you're supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Like that's the test. I think 2020 was a huge test on us. And some of us, uh, some of us given up, some of you given up fully because of the uncertainty of the uh, not knowing what's happening and really inside of you wanting so bad something so big but it has not been delivering and that's why you given up mm -hmm. and and so so think about this think about the 2020 and what how can you stop and not let the fear guide you in 2021 because that's really, really strong. And I have to tell you, sometimes I think, okay, like when we meet or uh, here on, on, these, on these meetings, uh, I want to deliver as much as I can to you. And do I fear sometimes these episodes, even like a per one person shows up? <laughs> we were laughing about this one person shows up. You know, when you have lives and things like that, yes, you can fear, but there's always something that you can deliver, say one sentence or something that it's going to uh, make some, someone think. Mm -hmm. And it's not always, do you think that it's all about the wow effect? Do you think you always have to be wow no. each time? Exactly. It's not about wow effect because I think if you always think about wowing someone all the time, what's going to happen is you're going to stop because you cannot deliver 100% of wow all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's what, if you're going to feel each time that you're going to, okay, I'm going to start the program to deliver to my clients. But if you're going to start that every single day, you need to deliver the wow effect and you're not, how this yeah. is going to stop you. You're going to feel like, okay, I'm not good enough. Or I, I did not, uh, th this program is not good enough for me to start. And then you're going to not going to start in the first place. Mm -hmm. Correct. We have a special <laughs> guest. So what have you done to change your current situation? Have you done anything or are you still in a limbo, like floating? This dog is unbelievable. Look at her. Now she brought me, first she brought me Grinch, now she brought me the ball. Thank you. Thank you, Raka. So, are you, did you, have you, do you know that this is Bang? Ivanka's gonna be running on energy now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, what have you done to change your current situation? Because we are at the end of 2020. Are you stuck or are you feeling like you're progressing? What is happening? It's the end of the year. Did you do the deadline? Did you start something and you're going to put on a deadline? I, I have I put a deadline for me and I need to finish what I started. So, guys, how are we going to enter 2021 with no excuses? Write this down or you can listen and enter your uh, uh, answers later. What things must happen this year not to repeat the same mistakes next year? What is my not to do list? You, what things you're not going to do. I have to tell you what I made decision. And I add it to my uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. That every day I am going to call my family in Poland for five minutes. It doesn't need to be a long phone call. But to my, my older grandparents and to my mom every single day. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Because I used to would call less. Not less, but not as often. And I, for some reason... Thinking that I might, who knows how, when I'm going to see them in Poland. And I don't want to take my chances of not being able to speak to them. Who knows last time. My grandparents are very old. And I don't want to have that moment of 
Because I, I, I think about it. Like, well, you just saw your parents, right? Mm -hmm. But you can drive there, literally. Mm -hmm. I cannot go to Europe. And Europe is closed. I cannot go there. And I, each time I think, like, when the border is going to be open? When will I have a chance to see them? Yeah. So that's what I, what I did. What is your main to-do list? Like, pick five things, but really stick to three. Three things. The major things that it's going to, first of all, it's going to bring you some income because that's what we got to think, you know, no income, there, you, you got to have an income and let's not weird think about the money because a lot of people think about the, weird about the money that they, they, they just afraid of talking about the money, but you need to make the money, right? So three major things next year that's going to happen and that's considered projects and the money making, right? So what needs to stop so you can scale? And I think of thinking and doing. Thank you. What will stop so you can scale? I don't know. Maybe you need to touch less your phone. I don't know. I just recently made the decision and I am putting the phone away. Mm -hmm. I work when I work. I respond when I respond. And if there is no emergency, there is no phone calls going on that I need to answer, this is good. I think we, because mm -hmm. did you realize sometimes we just go like, oh my God from one thing to the next mm -hmm. right and then yeah. you're catching yourself touching the phone all the time mm -hmm. so i don't want to do this so uh, what happens what happens do you so that's what you need to stop right how many days a week will you work out like are you gonna put three to five you're gonna be specific every day seven days a week especially if you are a person that may be starting a program and wants to become fit and healthy where are you gonna go? Like, you need to be there direct. And honestly, you need to put this on the schedule and really plan the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if you don't, then what's gonna happen? Life's gonna happen and you're gonna come home, you're gonna be tired and you're not gonna do anything. Mm -hmm. So what must be done so you do, not, you do not quit your routine? Think about it, what had happened that you quit your routine? People always answer nowadays COVID. Did you realize mm -hmm. that? This is like a common answer right mm -hmm. it is COVID happened all right COVID is happening i hate that corona it, it, the world is like can is this be removed from our mm -hmm. life please we're gonna ask, call it cov <laughs> cov happened and remove this like okay this has nothing to do really with you you can still work out no matter what so if this was your your excuse 20, think about this excuse stopping you from losing the weight, getting into the best shape of your life. Remove. Be specific. How many books will you read? Kristen, you count, you're holding me accountable okay. for this. Two a month. I think I have to send you a message. You will. I'm going <laughs> to ask you every month now. I know. <laughs> Two books a, a month. Now, what if... We, we, I didn't say this one, one thing, which I just learned recently. Yeah, I know that you've been doing this. You read and then you listen. Sometimes I do, or I'll listen and then I'll read because I'll hear really good stuff, but I want to like, I don't know, take it in more and just really think about it. When you listen, it's you can't highlight, you can't take notes. Sometimes I'll pause and like write something down real quick, but there's something different about like visually seeing it and absorbing it that way versus audibly. Yes. So, our mind drifts. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Sometimes I'll be passively listening. Like I want to be actively listening, but I get distracted and start doing whatever or dishes or something. And I think I'm listening, but my mind goes somewhere else. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. And then I I'm like, I didn't hear that. So. I caught myself doing the same thing. And, uh, but here's the thing. Like when you listen and you read, the, the information is double, so that's what I need to do because a lot of time, I have to tell you, I would go into a book and then I would listen to something else. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to change, that means that it's total of reading, listening, reading, and listening. That's, that comes to like four, but it's total of two books, but I need to do this. That's one thing that I need to take it from you. Uh, you gotta write it down. How many books a month? Just write it down. Listen, write it down. It's a little bit better to go over than less. 
what new relationships you need to develop. Who do I need to connect with? That's good, important. Maybe you need to have a coach. Maybe you need to hire a big physique to get you to your goals. Maybe you need to have a mentor. Maybe you need to, you need to follow someone. Listen, in order to scale, you, you need to have accountability. As we said, yes. accountability will get you scale. If you do not have anybody accountable and you want to achieve something more, you got to have a hard time. So even the best of the best have someone else. You always hear this. Even coaches have coaches. I remember when I started out as a personal trainer, um, I had a personal, or all the other trainers in the gym, they worked out with the other coaches or had some one offsite sometimes they worked with. And they, I remember them telling me, even coaches have coaches. We need to be held accountable sometimes. Yes. And we can learn and be developed from other people who have been doing it longer, who have had more life experience. So yeah, even coaches need coaches. Yes, and, and this comes down to understanding that you, a person that can coach you, be, be as good as you, right? Not necessarily even in a workout, has to be better, but if, as long as the person will coach you accountable and push you for the workout, yeah. then you're gonna, you, you're gonna get the results that you were looking for. So find a good one, someone that will push you, that will ask the hard questions, that will not be afraid to tell you how it is. Uh, and, and I think in 2021, we need someone, we, we, we no longer need someone that will sugarcoat us. Because that's what has been in, in, in the coaching business. A lot of times people would find, would look for someone that would pat them only in the back and say, oh, it's okay. There are certain times, right, that it's okay, but there are certain times that somebody needs to shake you and tell you, listen, this is not how it's done. You can't repeating the same things over and over. The coach needs to be honest with you based on what you've been doing and like, give you a direction, say, you've been doing this so repetitively and you not, it's not going, it's not getting you anywhere. You need to start a different way. And it's good to ask people around us, right? It's good. Yeah. It's good to ask for opinion, for feedback. How do they do? What do, what do I need? So yes, connect with someone, maybe a group, somebody that want to push you and, and believe in you, believe in you. Cause the self belief in us is so low sometimes. And maybe you have, maybe you are in a family that you can't discuss certain things uh, with people, or maybe people don't understand where you're coming from. Cause listen, I wouldn't ask, I would never go to my grandparents and discuss with them a business. Mm -hmm. because they they don't understand i would not discuss or b talk business with my mom because she doesn't understand i can only discuss it with people that are kind of with me in the same area right so what skills do i need to develop so i can scale in my fitness and life in general in fitness as well in business in life what what skills i need to be more specific sometimes i need to um, don't repeat certain things that's the thing and just constant and be clear in my in my sayings so what you're gonna take what you're gonna promise to yourself we've been going for a long time mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta promise you you gotta promise your to yourself to take care of yourself every day you got you should promise yourself to work out every single day you should promise yourself to to work on self-development you don't know what self-development is you can't grasp it or maybe you are like saying you know what i i don't understand the concept of it right because they there can be people that don't understand the concept they 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 just don't know they wanted to maybe grow in in life but they what is what is the book is gonna do to me yeah i can understand this because i did this like over 20 years ago so you need to send us a message Promise to wake up maybe earlier. Promise, write it down. What's your body weight percentage right now? Body fat percentage. What's your weight? And maybe what you, where you want to get to. You know, maybe uh, promise to make the following changes in my diet. Write it down. This is like a commitment to yourself. I promise to exercise. Fill the blanks. How many days a week? I promise to quit the following bad habits. Uh, you know, write it down. Because this is very, very important. Maybe you've been drinking, smoking, whatever it is. I promise to attain the following new skills. You know, how maybe, maybe attending seminars, maybe 
specific line of work, whatever there is. I promise to attain fill in the blank level in my chosen sports or hobby. Maybe you want to learn something next year. Those are good things to write down, guys. That's how we're going to learn and scale and change and become better. I promise to keep better schedule. I promise to plan and prepare. Plan and prepare. Because a lot of people don't do this, right? Maybe uh, you need to touch the spirit, spiritual items too or financial items, whatever that might be. I promise to read this and this and many books. I promise to investigate the following topics. Maybe you have something that you've been putting off because you are scared. I used to never like electronics. Mm -hmm. Never liked to start them. Never, I hated it because it caused me to like, oh my God, transfer all these things. It would like freak me out. Mm -hmm. And now I got it and I'm like, oh, cool. I, I changed the approach to it mm -hmm. and, and, and the attitude. Uh, and all these things that we talk about it, fill in the blanks, do this exercise for yourself. And, and maybe you want to touch again, the financial aspect. Maybe you want to write that promise to earn this and this amount of money this year or invest this and this amount of dollars in my self-development or coaching. Because you're going to turn around, especially us ladies, you're going to turn around, you're going to go and get your hair done, you're going to go and get your damn nails done, you're going to go and do massage. In the meantime, it's $200, but yet you need to lose 50 pounds. So where is this making sense, right? We need to see what's really the most important thing. I'm not saying stop making your hair and look like a mess, I'm just saying that. Where is the most valuable thing here? Where, where, what's the most important right now? Okay. And not covering up, not covering up and being honest to yourself. Right? So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us, uh, for the last episode. And maybe you want to rewatch it. I know that a lot of you have been busy. It's right before Christmas and we celebrating Christmas. So it can, could have been a tight moment for you. For those of you who show up, thank you so much. And again, if you have any questions, post it here for us. Thank you again for joining. Kristen, thank you so much for joining. We had a good time with you talking and chatting and, and showing what we've done this year. And have a fantastic New Year. We're going to see you in the 2021. And bring the fire. Bring, bring it on. See what you, what you changed, what you developed. Post, again, post your things in there. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. No excuses. No.